You're listening to Should You Read It? Should You Read It is a weekly podcast that looks at books that can help business owners. I provide critiques and recommendations so that you don't have to wade through everything out there and can get back to running your business. Additionally, with each weekly book, we'll look at how it relates to other books in its field and what ideas cross over along all the books that I've read. Today in episode 8, we're going to look at Execute by Josh Long and Drew Wilson. This is all about how to ship work and not get stuck in the ideation stage. Well, it's great to have a whole bunch of productivity knowledge, so many people engage in what's called productivity porn. They read about doing more better, they can tell you about all the features of the task management apps out there, and how each application is doing something wrong. They're happy to pontificate on the virtues of GTD versus bullet journal versus Kanban to a point that makes others sick. But they never ship anything. They just read about it, and maybe they write about it. The book Execute is not for you if you want to engage in productivity porn. At least that's the hope of the author. It's not for you if you want to stew on ideas for a while. Josh Long and Drew Wilson say that you need to just jump on that interesting idea full force and execute. Here's a quote from them. This book is about executing ideas immediately, when inspired, rather than following the normal rules. The key here is inspiration. The authors figured that without inspiration, you're not going to work hard and produce something that's awesome. And here's a quote from them. But why is inspiration so important? Why would we want to spend our time writing a book about going from inspiration to execution as fast as possible? The answer is a simple three-part truth. One, happiness is making what you wish existed. Two, inspiration is the single most powerful source of energy in a creative professional. Three, execution means acting immediately on inspiration and planning as you build. Heck, even the book was the victim, I chose that word specifically, of this execution mentality. The primary author, Josh Long, wrote the book in a week, and he prided himself on the fact that he scrapped the whole thing the day before it was due. Now, they say inspiration because otherwise you've got to force yourself into work on something. With inspiration, you're passionate in the moment about shipping something so you don't have to force yourself to complete the task. It's fresh and fun, so you work. Here's a quote from them. While most people are trying to figure out how to eliminate distraction, Others are building things that they're so excited about that they don't even consider being distracted. While they say this book is broken up into five parts, they mostly repeat themselves. As I read further, I kept wondering what the repeated content had to do specifically with the section I was reading. While I am not going to address any parts on their own, I'll tell you what the authors say they are. So here's a quote from them. This book is broken down into five parts, purpose, inspiration, philosophy, process, and execution. After that, it kind of all goes mostly off the rails. The book sure has a passion, and you can tell it was written in a day. You can tell the idea was conceived in a week. The authors do stuff like come up with a new term for a minimum viable product, or MVP. There was a bit of mental wrangling to explain how smallest possible version was different than MVP, but after a few reads of the explanation, I never saw it. If this was a bigger business book, I'd say that they came up with SVP to have some intellectual property to sell to clients in a process which, of course, you can purchase from them for only $999.99 but I don't think anyone thought that far ahead. Now, my dislike is becoming obvious, but there is still some good in here. They have a bunch of very quotable sentences that I could see myself coming back to in my future writing because they said something worthwhile in a fairly concise and memorable way. So I'm going to give you a few to keep going. Here's a quote from them. Be someone that ships. It's the ultimate gauge of whether or not you are executing. I'm totally with them on this. If you're not shipping, then you're not doing much. Here's another quote from them. Are you battling with self-doubt? Remove it. You couldn't possibly know the outcome, so worrying about it doesn't make much sense. I totally agree here as well. You can spend so much time dreaming about the bad things that might happen, and it's all just a dream. You have no idea what will happen, so don't waste your time stressing about it. Again, another good quote from them. If you're currently stuck in a job you don't like or in client work that isn't fulfilling, do whatever it takes to start building for yourself. Make sure that you're spending more time on your side projects than the work you're obligated to. I love the sentiment here. You should be working on inspiring side projects if you want to get out of that gig you hate. So much of the sentiment surrounding it just sounded like putting in more hours and sacrificing everything around you like family and health and friends. Instead, read rest to find out what a long, strong career looks like. Or look at my review of Great at Work to see what it is to work smarter, not harder. 
Now here's another quote from Execute. Big projects are slow-paced, headache-inducing, juggernaut that leads to too many meetings, opinions, broken marriages, and late-night fast food binges. Big projects are what typically allow for an underdog to come out and steal the market. This is one of their rationale sentences for justifying this SVP term. Yes, bigger initial features you have, the harder it will be to finish the project. But I have no idea why that's a justification for going with SVP instead of MVP. I'll go back to another quote from Execute. Stalling is a mean creature. If we're stalling, that usually means that we're scared, ill-equipped, or procrastinating. I'm totally on board with them. Stalling's going to kill you. But Stephen Pressfield writes way more eloquently about this in The War of Art. Now, I wouldn't say more organized than these guys, but it's a way better book anyways. Another quote from Execute. The truth is that execution fulfills many of the things that we crave in our everyday lives. It gives us a sense of accomplishment. It gives us a sense that we're contributing in some way. And it gives us a strong sense of pride for the work that we ship. They're right. Shipping fulfills us. We need to do more of it. Now, finally, they call a lot of people pretty hard out with this quote here. If you have side projects that you've never finished and you haven't launched anything in the last year, you don't know how to ship. It took just over one year to build the Empire State Building. That's it. How long has your project taken? Now. I think if you call yourself an author and you haven't actually published anything in, I don't know, ever, you're probably just someone that likes to write. Now, Jeff Goins is going to disagree with me on this in The Art of Work, and I understand his reasoning for it. In his mind, you need no outside authorization to call yourself an author or writer. Now, the problem I see with this thinking is that I meet people every week that call themselves, whatever, a writer or a developer, or a designer. Once you talk to them, what they really want is to talk about being a writer. They're in love with the thought of being published. They never want to do the work to get there, though. They're not sitting in front of a keyboard or notebook getting words out of their head. They're showing up to networking events, talking about this thing that they aspire to be one day, maybe. Now we're going to wrap up this one pretty quick. Should you read Execute? No, don't read it. There are a few other quotes in here that you may want to use in your own writing, but I've got them all in my searchable resources, which is at curtismichael.ca slash resources. I've saved you the time of going to find them, so don't waste your time. If you want to learn about shipping, then there are much better books. If you're awesome at shipping, but your stuff needs a bit more polish, then you should read Perennial Seller by Ryan Holiday. There'll be a link to this in the show notes. If you're the type that starts a bunch of stuff and doesn't finish it, read Finish by John Acuff, or The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, or Do the Work, also by Stephen Pressfield. If you need to find what your passions are so you can focus on the right stuff, read The Art of Work by Jeff Goins you will get so much more out of any of these other books than you will out of Execute. It clearly shows that this book was conceived of in a week and then written in a day. It lacks structure. It repeats itself with so many cliched ideal statements that you're likely to have sore eyes from how much eye rolling that you'll be doing. So no, don't read Execute. Thanks for listening to Should You Read It? To support the show, you can leave me a review in iTunes or Heart or Star or whatever podcast player you use. These help more people find the show. If you want to get more reading done, you should also look at an Audible membership. If you get one using curtismichaelca slash recommends slash audible, that will support the production of the show financially. In our next episode, we're going to look at High Performance Habits by Brendan Bouchard. If you've been longing for another research back look at what it takes to be exceptional at work, then this book is for you. To get a primer on the ideas, listen to episode 6 for my review of Great at Work, which is another evidence-based look at what it takes to be amazing at your job.